Sarah Jacobson, Marketing Artsly. So today we're going to talk about how to do headlines or headings and what they mean for your um, SEO, search engine optimization, and how they help you to get ranked in uh, the search engine. So in the last video, we did our outline and kind of wrote out the content of our um, blog post and one thing I did want to tell you is how to find out how many words you've written if you go here it'll tell you that I wrote 1278 words okay great um, so about a thousand is probably good you could maybe do 750 but 750 to a thousand and again because we're doing this for ads we want to have enough content in there that we're gonna have room for ads to go in and so that we can be um, getting more revenue from our posts and now we're going to talk about our um, headings and this is an official function in WordPress and it's very much like you have headings in your uh, Word documents so our nine of course are headings and we're going to come here and we're going to click on that and we're going to say heading and there are all different levels of headings, H2, H3, and H4. And what those do, let's save this draft, and we're going to hit preview. And your theme will have them formatted in a certain way to make them stand out from the other parts of your document. So if you had a blog post that was nothing but the same old same old, it's going to, like, people are going to be very bored and they're going to, it's hard to read that much plain text on the internet. So once we go through and make all of these headings, we're gonna do that real quick. So we're gonna go through, and I'm gonna make all my numbered outlines, so you don't have to number them, but I like to number them. We're gonna make those all headings. Heading, 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 heading. Sorry about the heading song. Okay, so we got all our headings. Now, what these do in SEO is gonna be a little complex. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this a little bit because it's important. So if you come to Google, so go to Google, the Google, and you do real, estate niches okay yes i'm trying to rank for that one term right i want to rank for real estate niches but what about if i wanted to rank for other terms let's refresh this oh so we got a save draft with all our headings in it there we go so now we see that we have our real estate niches right here, and then we have luxury home buyers and sellers. I, but I don't have niche in there, right? So I'm gonna say luxury home niche, ah, buyers and sellers, right? Now I have little guys in here. I have little subheadings where I kind of went through, remember when we were writing, I was like, okay, if you're gonna do an outline, do an outline and then have subheadings inside your main headings, just like you do when you're writing a term paper or anything like that. Now, I don't want those to be the same size, the same H2 as those. I want those to be a little bit smaller. And again, this is done by the theme that you use for your website. Okay, so we have these. Um, luxury double dip, heading, heading three. Now, because I had done that for you, I don't have great, um, I don't have great other subheadings, but we're going to go through and see if we can find some. I'm adding niche in here. So I could put in here how to find second home buyers. 
And functionally, I just want to kind of break this up a little bit because it's going to be um, how to find out-of-town homeowners. Okay. All right. So let's save this and let's go look at our text again. So now we have this and then we have it broken up. So instead of huge blocks of text, as somebody's scrolling down, they could be like, okay, yeah, I know about luxury, big deal. Move up niche, I hadn't really thought of that one. Second home buyer niche, how to find them. Oh, she's telling me how to find them too, right? And so you can do that all the way through. You may not do, like for this, I'm saying how to find them, but it's, it's not necessary that you do that each time. And then here's another way to find some more of these. When you come into um, many of these, these searches, you're going to be able to find other keywords that you can use. Now I use a keyword tool called Related Keywords and it's a plugin for Chrome. That's what makes these guys show up below it. And we're going to put in here Related Keywords plugin. Okay. And I'll put a link to how to use that. But what I want to do is being a real estate agent prop profitable. Now, of course, you wouldn't do that. Examples of real estate specialities. Nice. Niche housing market. Uh, and you want to kind of look at these niche housing market. Niche housing market has come up twice. So I need to get that keyword into my blog post. Um... Military niche housing market. And I'm going to make that a subheading. Now we're going to do more with keywords later, but this is kind of if you're stuck for what headings you're going to want to use. Now somebody's not reading this, right? Um, and then I would want to make it work for mine. Finding a niche military housing market, right? And this is a H3 tag. Now let's talk about SEOs and headings and things you might have heard. So I have heard over and over and over again that it is super important to have H1 tags, which H1 tags are your, your um, title. So see how big that one is? It's done automatically with your with your theme most of the time. And then, but then I've heard this ridiculous theory that you have to have h1s and h2s and h3s and da, 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 da. well you don't have to have that you can um have like in many of my posts i only have h3 tags what google does to find out what you think is important is they actually kind of take a snapshot of your page because they know people manipulate the headings um and so as long as you're using headings to kind of highlight words that you think are important to your um, article, to your blog post, you're going to be fine. Now, with Google, with um, WordPress, there's another cool thing that can happen if you use your headings, and you can make a table of contents. So in an article like this that as you'll notice, when we get done, it's going to be about 1,800 words. I have about 500 words more that I need to add in that we'll, I'll show you later. But what I would do is I would type forward slash and then see how there's a table of contents here. What that's going to do is that's going to make a really nice table of contents that people can go through at the top of your blog post. Now let's save this. And it's going to, it's saving, it's thinking about it. There we go. And it kicked that over. 
Okay, so it's going to have a real nice table of contents, and that's based on our heading two tags and our heading three, th three tags. But to me, that's really getting confusing and hard to read, and I don't like that. So on your table of contents, you can come over here and say, I don't need the heading three tags. Now look how nice that looks. And you can type in here, table of contents. Right? Look how nice that looks. Let's save this. And that's just on, done automatically. You don't have to do anything for that. You're just going to be able to pop that right into your uh, blog post up there above everything. And what that can do, so I hear people say, well, they're not going to read my whole blog post. They're just going to read that top part. And for me, at least they're seeing this ad down here. They've seen this little baby ad. Um, so I am making a tiny bit of, of stuff, but I also think that they could go military buyers. I've never thought of them or college housing or something like that. So it's worthwhile if you have a long blog post that's really like this, that's easy to do the table of contents on, to do it. So hopefully that helps. The next video is going to be about internal links. How exciting. That's actually a really good one. So hopefully that helps. Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully.